G'day and welcome to Barney's Daily Devotional. Today we're thinking about the Lord's care. Yesterday we looked at the fact that Jesus' disciples wanted a relationship with God and wanted to learn from their master how to pray. How do you develop this vitally important aspect of your walk with God? And Jesus taught them from the start that it's it's not a matter of complicated words. It's very simple. Come straight to the point. Coming to our Father in heaven, praying for his concerns and his name and his glory and kingdom. And then for our own concerns, our, our, our daily provision, remembering we're in his hands and that uh, our desperate needs for forgiveness of sins that, and, and praying that we might walk with Jesus and we might follow him as he leads us not into temptations but rather help us to, to live for him. And today he continues on though. It's not just a matter of, of having the right kind of topics. As the disciples have asked him to teach them how to pray, what's really important is to understand what God is like and, and it really gives us the understanding of why we would do it. Why is it so necessary? And so as we continue in Barney Daily Devotionals, we're going to pick up from Luke 11 and from verse 5. Having just finished teaching them the Lord's Prayer, he says, Then he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and he goes to him at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, because a friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. Then the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children are with me in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, though, he'll not get up and give him the bread, because he's his friend. Yet because of the man's boldness, he will get up and give him as much as he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. He who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so as Jesus continues to teach them how to pray and to teach us how to pray, uh, there's a couple of aspects that are really vitally important. One is to come with boldness. That is, we can come to God confidently. We can come even though, you know, he goes on to say that we in ourselves are evil and, and by nature would deserve to be cut off from God. But because of what Jesus, well, what he was going to do, he's boldly, remember, resolutely set his face towards Jerusalem from chapter 9, the end of chapter 9. And he's on his way there to pay for us. And, and Hebrews will tell us because that Christ Jesus has, has opened the way and so we can come with confidence into the very throne room of God. That's in Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 19 on. Because we've been sprinkled by Jesus' blood, we've been forgiven, we have this new life and we can come to him boldly, confidently, knowing where we stand. That we're not groveling before a, a, a judge who, who we're not sure what he's going to say to us or do to us. No, we're coming to our Father and that's the second thing, not just to come confidently, but to come knowing what he is like, knowing that he is our heavenly father, that he cares for us. And, and even though, you know, we might have had mixed relationships with our own fathers, you know, sometimes they were, they were on our side and sometimes really helpful. Uh, sometimes we might have a bad relationship with them and there were times when it was very difficult. Even so, we understand what fatherhood is about. Jesus isn't teaching them this so that they can reflect on all the, the bad experiences with their own personal fathers, but to teach us that God is the good dad, the good father, who uh, we all know that we should be like or we all wish that we had. And he's saying, understand what fatherhood truly is about and then reflect on the fact that God is our father. That what is it the father's are supposed to do and what are the, how do they naturally operate well they don't resent their kids and and turn them down because you know ha sucked in you've you've asked for this thing and i'm going to be mean to you no he says yeah even you fathers you understand 
that when your son asks for bread, you don't give him, you know, a scorpion instead or a snake. You, no, you give them what's good for them, what's what they need, what's going to sustain them and, and give them life rather than something that's going to harm them and be nasty uh, for them. And, and you've got to understand that, that that is God in his relationship with us, not imperfectly like our fathers or like us when we are parents, but perfected, that he really does care for us, that he's not going to give us that which is harmful to us. He's not going to... Uh, turn us down outright because we, you know, uh, you know, stop, stop talking to me, stop bothering me. No, he he listens to our prayers and he treats us like his own children, and that's what we are. We've been adopted into his family, and it's interesting. At the end, he does. Jesus doesn't promise that the Father will give us everything we want when we ask, and that if we just have more faith, we would have exactly what we wanted from God. No, he promises that, um, you know, he who gives good gifts, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? You want, to be, you want the greatest gift from God? Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that teaches us about our own sin, that, that reminds us of the Scriptures and points us towards Jesus, the Spirit that enables us to cry out, Abba, Father, as we read in Romans chapter 8. Uh, that spirit, that, that is what God is going to abundantly bless us with. He already has. Uh, every Christian has the Holy Spirit. Uh, when we became believers, we were sealed with the Holy Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance. And so we know God is with us, whether we feel like it today or not. He is our Father. He is with us. And He calls on us to come to Him in confidence, in boldness, knowing our relationship with him is secure, that we're family and that he will uh, love us and give us what we need, uh, what's going to be best for us. Not everything we necessarily want. Uh, that's not what Jesus is promising, but he will really give us the best, the best thing that, that, we, that might include suffering at some time. And maybe you feel like that's been the case through this COVID crisis. But he will give us what we need to grow as his children, to, to thrive and to honour him. And so keep praying, keep praying in confidence, keep reflecting on the fact that God is your father. I don't know if you've thought about these things much recently. Uh, maybe that would be a good thing to go away and reflect on today. Uh, that God is your father who loves you. It would be worth thinking through uh, how did you, how is your father a good father? if or if he wasn't a good father, in what ways did he let you down? That God will never let you down. For those of us who are parents, it's good to reflect on, on how we relate to our own children too. But for those of us who, who just want to grow in our faith, the disciples have asked to teach us to pray. Well, we've seen what to pray for yesterday, but he's saying pray confidently and pray knowing your relationship with your Heavenly Father is secure. You are his child. And so keep it up they're great reasons to pray and never give up why don't we pray now we thank you that you are our heavenly father that through the sacrifice of your son through the gift of your spirit we are freed up we are paid for we have been adopted into your family and we have your spirit of sonship that's with us that enables you to call enables us to call you a heavenly father Help us to come to you confidently, to know that, that you are for us, that you love us, that you're not against us, you're not, and we don't have to be uh, uh, timid or uh, wonder what you think about us. We thank you that you, you love us and that you're for us. And so, Father, please help us to, to grow in this vital part of our relationship with you in being prayerfully dependent in everything. We pray that we might always bring our concerns to you. Uh, keep remoulding us each day. Forgive us for when we fail to, to develop this part of our relationship with you. Help us to, to trust you each day. Help us to bring our concerns to you. And Father, help us uh, when we gather together, whether it's by internet and zoom or whatever device or hopefully soon in person we pray please that you help us to be praying together 
uh, you know, with our common concerns and in joy and thankfulness, knowing that you are our Father. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.